If you have not already done so, please subscribe to this channel today. As you're aware, YouTube has made changes to the YouTube Partner Program that will affect smaller channels like myself. Any channel that has less than 1,000 subscribers plus not have 4,000 watch time hours will be removed from the partner program. I have been a partner since 2015 and I have already achieved my watch time hours with the 400 subscribers that I do have. That tells me that I am putting out content that you as a viewer enjoy, but I still need to make the subscriber list to maintain my partnership. So it doesn't cost you a thing just to hit that subscribe button. And I appreciate it and thank you in advance. Now on to the recap. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I am Poetry. You are here for a This Is Us recap and review season two, episode 13. That'll be the day. Oh my goodness. Now this is a day that we were all dreading is coming when we finally learned what really happened to Jack. So I'm about to get started here, y'all. I'm get my lappy toppy situated. So we start off um, the episode with a couple named George and Sally. They are packing up their belongings in their garage, and George just don't want to let go of nothing. You know, you know how we get, we build up stuff for a long time, and then it's hard to get rid of that stuff when it's time to move. And I am feeling the same way right now. I want to move. I need to pack. I don't even know where I'm moving to yet, but it's so much stuff in this house that I need to start letting some of it go. Like I have two storage rooms down in my basement, completely full. They have been full since I moved into this house. In addition to the stuff that's on the back porch and the stuff that's upstairs. I haven't used none of this stuff, but I refuse to let it go. I am a pack rat. And that looked like what George and Sally's garage is for them. It's their packing district. And um, Sally's saying, you know, we done had this house on the market for a few months. Ain't nobody interested in it. Um, but so, but we need to let some of this stuff go. We need to start letting it go. And she go over to the jukebox and um, she cover it. And George's like, oh no, we can't get rid of that. She's like, uh, yes we can. He said, no, because I remember there was a day when this pretty fine young thing came into my diner. And she's always put a quarter in the jukebox and play this same song over and over again. That'll be the day. And I did not like the ending verse that he stopped singing at. He said, that'll be the day that I die. And we all know that this is coming for Jack. So I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. What well, is game day at the Pearsons? And Becca is trying to bring Jack his game day shot that they normally do in the morning times. Every, it's tradition for them to do a game day shot. Um, but instead of the, instead this year, they got OJ instead of whiskey, you know. Ain't gonna give you the same kick, but you know, it's best for Jack this time. So, Jack tells Becca, you know, he decided not to quit his job. He think it would be best for him to start buying fixer-uppers and flipping the houses and then, you know, get his feet wet before he just go out there and start his own construction company. And, you know, she's really down and cool with that idea. And Randall, he must have a little hot date with little Miss Redhead, Miss Allison, uh, from the mall, you know. Because uh, Kate is like, look, he's been in the bathroom primping and pruning for over an hour now. Can he get out? I got to go pee. And Jack is like, you know, this is our last Super Bowl that we're going to ever have with the kids. So, you know, we need to make it count. And they take their little shot, you know. And I know he is talking about them going off to college. With the exception of Kevin, because he's going to be community college. But I know he's talking about them going off to college soon. But you just know where this is leading to. All these little catchphrases and everything that's leading up to the fact that this is the last days for Jack. <sighs> so, Becca and Miguel, they're going off uh, to run a few errands and Kevin is sitting down looking at his list. And I'm assuming that this is a list of people that he needed to make amends to. He had um, Randall's name on her, Tessa's name on her, his mom's name on her, you know. So, I'm assuming these are the people he had to make amends to. He texts Randall and was like, hey bro, what's up? Want to hang out today? But Randall is about to go over to the apartment complex. Him and Beth are about the apartment complex. And they need to start looking at the repairs. Beth is like, you know, let's be smart about this. Don't try to put all our eggs in one basket. We need to work our way up to these repairs, right? Let's do this without going broke. And Randall was like, I got this, boo. 
That's all right. I got this. Randall want to fix it all in one day. I already know. And I'm like, boy, you putting your cart before the horses. Slow the heck down. Slow your roll. <laughs> so, Kate walks in on Toby on his laptop, you know. And also, he get a little suspicious and he slammed the lid down. Normally, you would think somebody's watching porn. <laughs> and she did. She's like, what you watching porn? What you into, nurses? What you into? He all giddy and red and stuff. And Kate seemed a little bit intrigued at the fact that she thought he was looking at porn. But then, alas, he's only hooked on hounds. You know, Toby got puppy fever. He said somebody brought one in to work. And it was just like, the same way I get when I see babies. I have been having baby fever for three years straight. Do not bring me a baby and put it in my arms. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Because I wanted a second baby. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to get my Janet Jackson on or my Holly Berry and have one when I'm almost 50 or something. But, yeah. So, he got puppy fever, right? Um, but he know that Kate has some reservations and some hang-ups about owning a dog. So, you know, huh, he going to let that go. And I'm thinking, well, what the heck happened to the dog? actually forgot all about the doggone dog when what happened to him so Beth and Randall they hold a tenant meeting at the building they're gonna try to show up the residents on what code violations need to be corrected and what they're gonna address first but the tenants is like hey well, what about me hey what about me and Randall of course opens the floodgate by telling Rosemary I'm gonna fix your door for you so when she he said that, now Lloyd like, well, what about my heater? And then somebody else said, well, what about this? Now everybody's like, what, 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 what? Randall um, took over the doggone chart that Beth had set up with code violations, flipped the page and start writing down all these demands that they have. And Beth is like, what are you doing? She said, this is not what I call slowing down. He's like, I know, I know. We got this though. We got this. I told you, Randall wants to fix it all. He wants to do it right now in one day. Then all of a sudden, Kevin comes in. He wants to lend a hand. So, Jack is putting together an entertainment center so he can house the new TV up in there. Everybody can sit up and watch the game. He's trying to get Kevin's um, t you know, approval about, you know, how the entertainment center look. And Kevin is like, hey, it's, a, it's wood. What you expect me to say about it? It's a piece of wood, okay? And Jack is like, it's not just a piece of wood to me. This wood helps keep me sober. Every time I think about taking a drink, I got to pick up a hammer, you know? So back at the tenant meeting, um, I'm assuming Kevin must be in need of a hammer at this point. You know, he's trying to keep himself from drinking, so he needs to stay busy. Um, but you know, Randall really want to do this himself. So Beth is like, Randall, come on now. Come on, come on. But he is so sure that he can handle all this work in one day. It's in his piercing blood. What? What say you, girl? So all Beth can say is, good luck. You're going to need it. <laughs> And listen to all those tenants the man she is sure right he is gonna need all the help he can get well Randall was like I got this what I got this I got this he really saying it to try to convince himself that he has it but um Kevin's like you know what I get the door I said no 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 you cool he said no I'm gonna get the door so Kevin is up there um, with Rosemary and um he, hold on a second Sorry about that. My cat just started climbing off the dog on wall. I don't know what was going on with her. So anyway, Kevin was up there overextending himself as well with Rosemary. You know, he done fixed her door. And she made a comment about how her ex-husband put this wall up that's blocking her sunlight. And, and when he left, he didn't take the wall with him. So Kevin was like, I got that. And she was like, no, I'm just joking. He said, no, no, no. I got that. He need that. So, you know, you don't fire him up now. It's about to happen. So... Um, Allison and Randall, they getting cozy over cookies and Kevin is sitting there, you know, completing his college apps. And Allison say to him, hey, you know that Sophie applied for NYU. And um, what about you? What you going to do? <laughs> I think Kevin is a little shocked about the NYU. I don't think that he knew. He really can't let that show. You know, Kevin always got to be hard. But Becca cannot let stuff just go. Like she wants to show up the fact that 
He's going to community college like, hey, this is a great thing. He's going to community college, and when he gets his bed, grades better, he can go to any school he wants to. And, like, get his grades better. You know, Kevin wasn't no school. He wasn't no academic. You know, <laughs> Kevin is like, that. I think that made Kevin feel so small and so embarrassed at the time. And, of course, he tried to play it off with sarcasm and his tough guy act. Um, and Beck is like, the heck I do to him, <laughs> you know? So Kate, Kate, she got her letter from the music school and they open it up and they're asking her for a second audition tape. You know, they really, they on the second rounds and Jack is trying to encourage her to do a video, but you know, doggone well, Kate with her body image issues is not going to sit in front of a camera and let them take a image of her. No. So she decides that she's going to still do the audio. And she's just going to sing. So Kevin and Randall. Uh, <laughs> they get to work inside this apartment building. Uh, hold on. And these two are always competing with one another. Which is so funny to me when they do this comp competition as adults. Randall's like... Oh, roll this sleeve with her like this. Like, see that muscle? See that muscle? They walk down the hallway all tough. And Kevin look like him like, whatever, dude. But <laughs> Randall got that look on his face like, peep game. You don't want this. You don't want none of this. So Kevin get to work with the sledgehammer in Rosemary's apartment. Rosemary takes a seat and enjoys the view. She's like, all right, I got the Manny up in here. Yes. So Randall was all over in Lloyd's apartment trying to get that heater off. And Lloyd is sitting there looking like, I am so not impressed. <laughs> Pretty soon, all the women in the building is sitting up in Rosemary's apartment with their little cakes and cookies and their wine glasses looking at Kevin like, hey, hey boy, hey, what's that now? So, uh, <laughs> rather though, down in all the men's apartments at this present time being a tidy ball man. So, uh, <laughs> Kate decides to go to the kennel. I guess she's going to try to get Katopia dog. I was like, look at my girl. Go ahead on, Kate. And our girl Lena Waite is um in, in the shelter. She is um if you don't know who she is, she's the writer of Master of None and the new TV series The Shy that's on Showtime. She writes both of those series. And um so she's making a guest appearance on here as the shelter worker. So like I heard Masters of the Nun was really, really good. I've never seen it. Um people tell me that the shy is good. I was going to review that on this channel, but I could not get past the first episode. It just did not pull me in. But people are saying good things about both shows. Well, Kate is uh, feeling a lot of apprehension about the dog until she comes up on this little poo -oo -oo, This little poopsie doopsie. <laughs> you know the one that gets you. He all up on the gate. I don't like that looking all cute. Like, take me home, take me home, take me home. I'm like, oh, get the little puppy. He got his little dog face on. And his name is Audio. And when Kate sees Audio, her heart melts. Like, he is freaking adorable. Oh, I wish I had seen my dog at that age. I got my dog when he was eight months old. He was already the size that he is right now. Which is, he's 65 pounds. He's huge. So, Yep, I'm like, okay, he got her, he got her. Kate finna get a dog, y'all. So, young Kate is laying in her room, um, laying down her audio for the audition, and Jack is sneaking up behind her with the video camera. Kate sounds really good. I like the song, too. But then the dog on dog gives Jack away. And, of course, Kate is not pleased at all. Randall comes up um, and tells Jack, hey, I'm bouncing on a Super Bowl because my girl Allison want to go see Titanic. I know she's done seen it a hundred times, but we ain't had a real date yet, so I'm about to go do that. And this is not the day that Jack had planned. I mean, Kevin mad at Becca, Kate upset at him, Randall about to bail on the whole family. This is not a piercing Super Bowl day. So, back at the apartment, Randall calls Beth to gloat. About the fact that him and Kevin got things done. They done put in some work. And then all of a sudden you hear somebody screaming Randall's name. Randall! So it's Lloyd. And he goes into Lloyd's apartment. And La Cucarachas 
They were everywhere. They were flooding out the wall. I'm like, what type of roaches do y'all got in Pennsylvania? My God. They was huge. Okay, roaches. Ooh. <sighs> 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 mm. Becca. She's eavesdropping on Kevin. He just got a phone call, and it's from Sophia. And it seems that Sophia ain't called Kevin all weekend. Um, she got accepted into the school. And he didn't know nothing about it. So it looks like that relationship might be on some shaky ground. I don't know what that was about. Um, but Becca, you know, she's trying to find a silver lining in the situation. And um, somehow it just ends up making Kevin feel worse. I don't think that was her intention at all. I think she was really just trying to find a civil lining in the situation. And then um they get but they get into an argument about it. And Jack is like, look, hey, stop talking to your mama like that. Cameron's like, y'all just don't get it. Y'all doesn't get it. I'm supposed to have been in the Super Bowl, not sitting there watching it like y'all. And I am not sure, but I'm taking that to mean that I should have been able to follow my dreams. I had no reason. I wasn't giving up on my dreams. I wanted to play football. Y'all gave up on y'all dreams and y'all sitting back watching other people's dreams happen. That's what I took from that. Y'all let me know if that's what y'all got as well. So, um, <sighs> Kate, she up in her room and she decides to go ahead and look at the video that Jack did of her singing. And she catches her daddy smile at her in the video. And she plays that back several times, several times. Earlier, she had told Jack that she was tired of him praising her because it, it makes her feel bad. Because she don't see herself the way that he see her and nobody else does either. So him just seeing it, saying it does not sound truthful, I guess. So it makes her feel bad about it. So in this moment, she realized the genuine love that her dad has for her. He, he was just so happy to hear her singing and like, yeah. So, at the shelter, Kate is ready to walk out there with a little audio. Everything seems to be lining up, audio even like music, which is why he got the name audio. And so she could sing to him. I'm like, hi. So, but once Lena leaves the room to go get the, um, I don't know what her name was on the show, so I'm calling her by her real name. Once she leaves to go get the vaccination records, Kate sits there and she's rubbing him and she looks at him and she sees her other dog in that moment. She started tearing up. She was like, I can't do this. Mm -mm. You can't go home with me. I got too much baggage when it comes with dogs. And you're going to be the bone collector if I bring you into my house. So, no, I can't do it. So, she, she gets up and she rushes out of there. And he looks so sad. Especially when she starts to break down in tears. The dog looks so sad. And I'm like, did the dog have something to do with Jack dying? Like, what happened? To this dog or was jack trying to rescue him like what happened to the dog so randall after the roach incident he got loaded up the residents and he trying to put them all up in a hotel all of these residents in a hotel on his dime and he hope uh he hope it's only for a few days but this is roach extermination i don't know what it takes to get rid of roaches in a whole dog on apartment building but beth is not gonna be happy about this y'all so Randall was trying to get everybody out, and Kevin's like, I gotta stay here for a few more minutes because I need to stay busy. I need to stay busy. So I was right about the list. It was Kevin's list of names of people that he needs to make amends to. They have you do that when you go through Alcohol Anonymous and um, I think NA as well. And um, he was like, you know, there's one relationship that I can't amend. So the closest thing I can get to it is fixing this wall because you no know, daddy loves to construction. So. He wants to finish that wall. And he was like, well, Randall, what's your deal, though? Because you still here trying to bust out all this work in one dog on day with no help. He said, I know the actor was here, but heck, I really ain't no help for real. And he's like, um, he feel like he's running out of time. <laughs> and he said he's 40, about to embark on a new career. And he just don't feel like he got any time to do it. Like, death is knocking on his door. And I was like, don't that sound like me from last week? That is the exact same conversation I had with you guys last week. Um, Randall says, you know, he can't even picture himself old. I can't either. I don't know why I can't either, y'all. Um, but he's like, he fears that, you know, he, he ain't going to even outlive Jack. Then he's not going to get older than Jack was. 
And I'm like, oh my God, he sounds like me. I try not to make all these about me, but that sounds like me. Um, so, which is so weird that it sounds like me because I didn't have that same experience. I have never had anybody, um, I had one friend named Tiffany that died at 14. But anybody that was like really close, family related in my life that died at a young age. Although I think 80 is a young age. I really do. Like I want to live 10 years past the age that my great grandmother died. My great grandmother died at 104. But if I could live forever, I want to be that person. Y'all could put me in those little cybergenic things and freeze my body until they figure out how to cure death. I'm that person. So I, I totally get it though. Um, it's, it's daunting as hell to think that you just finna start a new life over and you're so, you think that you're so close to the end. So Kevin is like, dude, we got time. Mm -mm. But time flies, Kevin, time flies by super fast. He said that Jack, Randall said Jack has been gone for over 20 years, for at least 20 years, which is longer than they actually had him in their life. I was like, that's, that's some deep depressing mess right there. Kevin tell him, look, you ain't got no words, man. Just just pitch yourself old. That's all you gotta do is picture it. You got your health, you got your kids, and Beth is not gonna let you die. She'll kick your butt before she lets you die. So, you know, you're gonna get old. You're gonna get grow old and be a good man, just like your other father, William. That does Randall's heart some good. So it's a pre-game time. Kate comes in to tell Jack, you know, don't stop trying to get me to see myself. Like you see me. I appreciate that. But I don't want to stay here for the game. I need to go to Molly's house instead. So all the kids going on their own way. Leaving Becca and Jack the pregame on their own. So um, Becca brings him a plate of muffins and coerces him to take one. And under the napkin is an ad for a house. And I'm thinking this is the house that's owned by Sally and George, the way she was describing it. And Jack is like, okay, cool. I'll call them tomorrow. But Becca has already put um, a bug in the real estate area. Like, hey, we want to see this house. So, it says older, owned by older company, so it's probably going to be a few pairs needed. But, you know, hey. So, then Jack said, hey, let's do this together. And she's like, what? He's like, yes, let's do this together. She already did it when they moved to their house. They remodeled their own house. She handled all the finances. She handled all the designs. It could be done. So they go seal their deal with a little hanky-panky. And I'm like, I guess it's not a bad Super Bowl after all. So Beth comes in um, and chews out Randall the only way that Beth can. She, has, she talks to you nice, nasty, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it every time. And she's like, all that drywall has to be torn down. So all the work they just did got to be reversed. Just to get rid of those doggone roaches. I said, I knew it was going to be something. I knew it was going to be something. That's going to cost them a lot of doggone money on top of this hotel stay. Because ain't no telling how long that's going to take. And Beth said, look, son, come here. Lean in for a second. I do this for a living. This is what I do. So the next time you get a big idea, think about your partner. Okay, check with me because I know what the heck I'm doing in relation to an apartment building. So he like, okay, all right. She said, slow it down, baby. Slow it down. I know this is R and B properties, but we need this to be smooth R and B. Slow it all the way down. Slow it down. <laughs> so Kevin um, calls home and apologizes to Becca about the way he spoke to her earlier. And she tries to get him to come home and watch the end of the game with Jack, you know, say he's not mad, but she, he's most likely hurt. But he tell her he's staying at Sophia's house. And they're like, wait, what? You staying where? Did you just tell me you finna stay at your girlfriend's house? And you don't ask my permission. You tell me, and that's cool. I'm like, I could not imagine doing that to my family. Couldn't imagine. Kima can't do it right now. She 20 years old. She better not come tell me I'm going to stay somewhere. I don't care who it is, girl or boy. No, mm -mm, you better ask and let me give you permission to do so. So, anyway, he said he's staying over and he'll be back in the morning. So, um, then after they hang up, Kevin talks Sophie into going to that party in the woods. Remember when they found him, he was in the woods at a party. So, Becca looks at all the food around on the kitchen table and she starts to put it away. And then she's like, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> So she's going to go upstairs or go in there to watch the rest of the game. 
Next, we see uh, Kevin in New York on Sophie's doorstep again. She's like, do I need to move? Because if you're going to keep doing this, I think I need to relocate this. It's a sign to tell me to move somewhere. So Sophie says, you know what? I didn't even see it in you, Kevin. I don't know why I didn't see it because I'm a nurse. And I'm thinking you actually did see it because you kept addressing his liquor. You kept addressing his booze. He was just doing it in a semi-nagging way. But you, you recognized it. You knew something wasn't right with him. Um, but she pretty much tells him, don't come back. She said, you're the only man that I ever loved, but you're the only one that ever hurt me the way that hurt me this way. So if you want to make amends with me, don't come knocking on my door no more. Leave me with the memories of us when things are good. So go on, check my name off your list, Kevin. Goodbye. I was like, oh, that was final. That was neat right there. That was done. So Kate comes in and tells Toby, I went to the dog shelter today. Toby got that fire going like you did. What? 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 Hey, hey. But then she begins to douse out that fire. And she brought up the fact that she had bad memories of having a dog. And then Toby's like, okay, you know, he goes to the good boyfriend mode. It's like, okay, okay. I got you. I understand. I understand. But you can see clearly that Toby really wants this dog. He was hoping for more. Then she said, but then on the drive home, I start thinking about how happy you would be. And he's like, hey. What you saying to me, woman? Tell me what you, what's going on. Don't tease me like this. <laughs> Kate brought audio home. I was like, oh my goodness. That's such a good dog. You see how he was just sitting so calmly in that hallway? My dog gonna sit. My dog in a cage right now because he won't sit still while I'm recording the video. He be all up in here and whimpering. And whimpering, and whimpering. That's why I have to keep stopping the dog on camera. Try to get him to stop whimpering. Because he want attention. Audio was like, hey. What's up now? <laughs> I've been training my dog with four dog on yours, and he won't listen to me. Only command he listens to is chair. And that's, he got a chair over here that nobody else sits in but him. I say chair, he know to go sit in that chair, but he won't stay longer than 15 seconds. <laughs> He'll go, but he won't stay long. And uh, then Toby let that dog lick him in his mouth. And I'm like, oh, why, why? That's so gross. So. So Kevin gets home, and then some express mail is on the floor for him. He rushes to open it up, and there's his daddy's necklace. The wave of relief and joy that came over him was just like, oh, my God. Apparently, he had wrote a letter to Charlotte, you know, to make amends with her. And she got the note, said, hey, good, you sober now. I found your daddy's necklace. Here you go. So he could finally check her name off the list. Well, actually, he already had her name checked off, but he pulled his list out. And he's able to check off Sophie's. Then he turns the list over and see Dad written on the back. I'm assuming he feel like he, maybe he could check the name off now, but he just breaks down crying. He just breaks down. So then um, Kate is in the bed listening to her audition song, and Jack is awakened by the door slamming shut. It's Randall, but he thought it was Kevin. I would have thought that um, Becca would have told him that Kevin said he wasn't coming home that night. Randall goes to bed, and then Jack starts to clean the kitchen himself, and he left a note on Kevin's door saying, hey, if I don't see you in the morning, I love you. But you owe us some apology. So I guess Becca didn't tell him that Kevin called to offer his apology. So he finishes tidying up and he puts the, the dishcloth down on the counter next to the doggone crock pot that is on. I noticed that it's on. And then he turns that crock pot off. But the rag is right there next to that hot crock, the hot crock pot. We go back over to Sally and George's house and Sally comes in and tell him, hey, we got a call about the house. I'm like, okay, that was Kate calling about the house. And George, like I said, he don't want to let things go, but he pack up his little box and he walk his box down the street. And he takes it to Jack and Becca's house. It's like, wait a minute, what the heck is going on? Then Jack and Becca waddles her butt up there and I realize, oh my God, they were moving when Becca was still pregnant. So it's not the same house, okay? And... Uh, he gives them a crock pot, that same damn crock pot that was sitting on the counter. And that crock pot, he tells them, it works, but you got to fidget with the doggone button for a little while. And I'm like, please don't tell me that this crock pot is what started the fire. Please don't tell me that. Oh, then we get back to the house. It's dark in the kitchen. And that damn crock pot comes on. And then light flickers. And it keeps flickering. And they keep flickering until it sparks. Then it sparks a flame. Then we go back in time to Christmas when Jack was giving her those dishcloths and he surprised her with some jewelry underneath the cloths. Then we go back to the, the house and the cloth whew, sets a flame. And then all of a sudden, some more flashbacks. Then the curtains catch fire. And then we walk through some more happy moments at the Pearsons. And then the wall catches fire. 
Then we shows the height chart that Jack was looking at earlier with the kids' heights on it. And then all of a sudden, it's engulfed in flames. And Becca standing there smiling. And then the note that he left on Kevin's door goes up in flames as well. And so Kevin ain't going to get that note. And while everybody was sleeping, the fire is slowly burning and burning and creeping up the steps. And then I just thought at this doggone moment that if Kevin had come home, Kevin might not have made it because Kevin lived in the basement. So it's a good thing he didn't come home that night. He'd have been trapped in that doggone basement. Oh my God, the dog was in the kitchen. The dog was in the, the dog must have died in that fire because everybody was upstairs. Oh my God, that's so sad. Oh my God, that's the end of This Is Us, y'all. This Is Us. Oh my God, y'all know that This Is Us is coming back on on Super Bowl Sunday. And then it'll be back on on Tuesday. So I will see y'all next week. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace. Whew.